Curve has made headlines once again after a software exploit resulted in $1.5 billion of outflows and put a further $100 million at risk. According to DeFi Llama, nearly half of all the cryptocurrency deposited on Curve Finance has since been removed. So what is a re-entrancy attack and what went wrong? Borrow and lend with almost anything in your wallet using Ajna. More on them later. Curve was the second largest DeFi exchange before announcing that the vulnerability allowed a hacker to drain around $50 million from several DeFi projects. The price of Curve's CRV token dropped 20% in just five hours, from 72 cents down to 58 cents. PeckShield revealed a $27 million theft from Curve Finance, but the damage went a lot further. According to B in Crypto, a re-entrancy attack also hit other DeFi protocols like Ellipsis, which suffered a major BNB loss and cost JPEG $11.4 million, Alchemix $13.6 million, and Metronome DAO $1.6 million, leading to a total of $2.3 billion drop in the ecosystem's TVL. Now, before we get into the exploit's details and why it's significant, let's clarify why the market is anxious about a further price decline because a 20% price change in crypto might not seem like a lot. However, back in May, the founder Michael Egorov was in the news for spending $40 million not on one, but two mansions in Australia. Loans were taken out by Egorov using CRV as collateral. So when we factor in Egorov's CRV-backed loans to the tune of $168 million from different DeFi protocols, which now risk being liquidated if prices fall much further, things get a bit sticky because if CRV drops further to 37 cents, Egorov's position will be liquidated. Now, according to Autism Capital, this potential liquidation could cause a cascade of sell-offs and further shorts. Now, let's get into the details of the re-entrancy attack, which is a type of attack that occurs when a smart contract interacts with another contract, which in turn calls back to the first contract before fully executing. The attackers managed to hit several DeFi protocols that had liquidity on curve, and they did so by leveraging a vulnerability tied to the smart contract programming language Viper to target liquidity pools. So what's Viper and what's a liquidity pool? Viper is an alternative programming language for Ethereum smart contracts. Liquidity pools, on the other hand, are smart contracts that hold tokens and facilitate swaps without depending on intermediaries. And that makes the system more efficient and cheaper for the users. The bad news is that even a tiny flaw in smart contracts can lead to substantial losses as we saw on Sunday. But the good news is that according to Curve Finance, the liquidity pools that don't use Viper are safe. Now, before we continue, a quick word from Ajna. Introducing Ajna, a new DeFi protocol that gives you the freedom to borrow and lend with almost anything in your wallet, from the oldest ERC-20s to the newest NFTs. Ajna is designed without oracles and governance, so no need to worry about oracle exploits or governance friction. Ajna massively expands what's possible in DeFi borrowing and lending. Try Ajna today on summer.fi forward slash Ajna. Now back to our story. Ignas tweeted that a whopping 48% of the circulating CRV supply is deposited as collateral by the founder himself. One benevolent hacker managed to recover and return $5.4 million of the stolen funds, and Tron founder Justin Sun went as far as scooping up 5 million CRV tokens just for $2 million, which is 32% lower than the current market value. Sun said he just wants to help. Traders, on the other hand, were less compassionate and have been using perpetual futures to short CRV as concerns about the founder's borrowing have been amplified by news of the exploit. So what do you think? Are the fates of Curve Finance and its founder inextricably linked? And what does this story say about the level of interdependence among DeFi protocols? Let us know in the comments. Thank you for tuning in and stay defiant.